Do you have a loyal friend who will defend you? Do you? I hope you do. Welcome to The Daily Devo. I am Vince Miller. Remember to check out The Vince Miller Show in the link below. There's either a URL or a button below. Check that out. But this week in The Daily Devo, we are in 1 Samuel chapter 20. I've titled this chapter, Friendship and Loyalty in Adversity. And in yesterday's devotional, we found David seeking assurance from Jonathan amidst all his fears of Saul's relentless pursuit of David's life. Today, David is going to put this to the test with Jonathan in verses 5 through 9. Here's how it reads. David said to Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit at table with the king. But let me go that I might hide myself in the field till the third day at evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David, earnestly ask leave of me to run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the clan. If he says good, it will be well with your servant. But if he's angry, then know that harm is determined by him. Therefore, deal kindly with your servant for you. He's talking to Jonathan. For you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. But if there is guilt in me, kill me yourself. For why should you bring me to your father. And Jonathan said, Far be it from you. If I knew that this was determined by my father, that harm should come to you, would I not tell you? Now, it seems from this text that we can conclude that every once in a while there would be king's meetings in his house. They would happen on a cycle of the new moon and last three days, and officials and warriors like David were required to attend. However, David is still pretty unsure about King Saul. So he is unsure if he wants to attend this particular meeting. And the unresolved question is whether or not Saul experienced a permanent change in Naoth when he encountered the spirit, or if it was a mere temporary experience. And we all know it's temporary because over the past few months, David has expressed experienced uh, this escalating threat from Saul. And now royal orders have been given to kill David. David doesn't want to intentionally expose himself to the snare of the king. So David devises a pretty sneaky plan. He plans to test Jonathan's loyalty and Saul's at the same time. But the plan involves telling a pretty elaborate lie. Let's just be honest. It's a lie. It's a lie to test Saul's irritation with David's absence. So Jonathan would tell his father that he permitted David to return to Bethlehem, the place, number one, where he was anointed king, and to the father to whom Saul would not allow him to return. That's a big deal. David knows that these are triggers for King Saul. He's smart enough to know that if anything would awaken a spirit of aggression, it would be Jonathan permitting David to escape back to his home. Now, even though the Bible does not justify lying, both David and Jonathan choose to tell Saul a lie. So let's address this matter. I want you to notice the tone of David in the text. David accepts, is willing to accept righteous justice, but he believes that Saul will not act righteously. He believes Jonathan might, but Saul will not. So instead of submitting his life to a snare, a death trap, they devise a way to poke a stick at the snare. They're testing the snare. They want to see if it works. And of course, we know the snare does work. Saul is trying to capture David. Now, about lying, right? I would say, and you're going to hear this from me, there are only extremely rare instances in life where lying might be justified extremely rare. Very, 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 very rare. So rare it might not ever happen to you in your life. However, when your life is threatened by unrighteousness and evil and malicious people who have set snares for you, that might be one of those instances. For example, I would hope that if an intruder broke into my home and I knew they were trying to break in and I hit a child, I hope that you know it would be okay to lie about a hiding child in a house. Or, for example, if you were a Jew being hunted down by a Nazi regime, I hope you would hide your whereabouts or maybe lie about it because, well, there are some instances in life when 
the moral imperative to protect innocent lives against evil outweighs the ethical dilemma of lying. And of course, you're going to see this shown to you in the coming verses, specifically in the instance of the showbread. And Jesus has a wonderful New Testament example of that. All right. So just remember, it's extremely rare. Now let's jump back into some application in this text. Loyalty and support for believers is really crucial during tough times, isn't it? This has been true for me in my life. We need loyal brothers in our life during trying times. So this week, I want to encourage you to be that brother. To this week, reach out to a friend who's going through some adversity. Send them a text. Maybe shoot off an email. Maybe make a call or, or plan a meetup for coffee. Do this. Encourage them and let them know that they are not alone, that you are with them. And I promise you this, your presence, your, just your presence will help them feel less isolated and might help them through the snares that they believe are being set for them. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else. And I'll see you right back here again.